Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. So here's another deck profile for you guys today. This time something special. This time I'm presenting you guys my own GOAT format deck, aka Recruiter Chaos. So for those who are unfamiliar with GOAT format is, it's basically during the time of Yu-Gi-Oh! where we actually got the very first ban list. A lot of cards were banned, a lot of cards were limited, semi-limited, etc, etc. And uh, some call this like maybe one of the most balanced formats. Some, you know, some... You know, there's some debate about that, and yeah, I definitely think this was a pretty cool time for Yu-Gi-Oh. It's definitely old-school Yu-Gi-Oh, but uh, basically what considered this GOAT was that you can basically use cards anywhere from Legend of Blue Eyes to the Lost Millennium. And what was also neat about this is that there's a lot of cool pre erratic cards like Sinister Serpent, Ring of Destruction. A lot of cards were crazy during this format, so yeah, it, it was pretty cool. And there was so much variety, and a lot of people would play like the most staple cards, Scapegoat, at 3, so that's bigger, basically what I wanted to showcase to you guys and yeah let me just show you guys what my original build well as close to my original build was back when i was a kid because i actually did play a lot of this format back then so yeah all right so the main deck is 44 cards and again this is recruiter chaos so you're going to see some things that are a little bit different than some usual goat format decks but let's start off with the big guys uh, of course you got to play one copy of black luster soldier on for the beginning as a kid i didn't own this i had chaos emperor dragon but it was banned so i actually had to play the next card at three so Two copies of Chaos Sorcerer. Uh, so Chaos Sorcerer is not as broken as uh, Black Lesser Soldier because it only banishes face up monsters, but it's still pretty big. And the fact that it's just a good way to out certain cards, yeah, it's Chaos Sorcerer is pretty good. Or Jesus just called him Chaos Sork for short. Uh, next, one copy of Jinzu. Uh, so back row, you know, uh, there were there were some good amount of back row, but not a whole lot of trap cards because people were scared of Heavy Storm and Jinzu. So. Yeah, Jinzo is a main deck stable. Well, some people cited this out. It depends on what deck you're playing, but yeah, Jinzo is still really good. Oops. Uh, one Air Knight Parshoth. I played this simply because it was a good way to out Scapegoat, because, like, yeah, they'll still have a tokens, but the thing is, Air Knight Parshoth does piercing damage, plus when he does battle damage, you get to draw a card. So, yeah, Air Knight Parshoth is pretty strong. Now, for the cards that basically what names this deck, two copies of Mystic Tomato, because, you know, again, I am playing recruiters in this deck. And two copies of Shining Angel. Both of these cards are really good because not only do they uh, inherently give you free lights and darks in the grave, but they also draw other cards from your deck. Essentially deck thing, basically. So uh, for Mystic Tomato, I got several targets. Shining Angel, I got a few too. And with cards like Tsukiyomi, that lets me just book a Moonum later, or if I just need to go into DD Warrior Lady. Yeah, these two cards are basically the cards to go. But uh, a primary tar uh, example would be the next card. Nudoria, a great card to bring out with Mystic Tomato. Uh, if it's destroyed by battle and sent to the graveyard, you can target one monster on the field, destroy that target. And it could just be a free set, so like if you just set this card face down, and you know your opponent's going to summon something that's going to be pretty big, they can just run over this, and then you can just pop it, and boom, you're pretty much set to go. Uh, two copies of Magician of Faith, another good staple during this format, simply because, yeah, Magician of Faith recycled a lot of the broken spells like Pot of Greed, Graceful Charity, basically anything you needed. Uh, in my build, I did play Magical Merchant. Just because, you know, I am playing a lot of monsters and I definitely want to not only feed my graveyard, but also get access to one of my best spells and traps if I need to. But, um, yeah, it's not too bad. Actually, in my original build, I played a Sewer Priest over this, but I don't have a Sewer Priest just yet, so I'm working with what I got. Uh, a lot of one ofs here. I got Breaker the Magical Warrior, you know, because not only does it become 1900, but you can also pop a card. One Deity Warrior Lady, which can easily be brought out through, uh, through uh, Shining Angel because it is a light monster. Uh, one Dekoichi for more draw power, and it's also dark, so that's pretty neat. Uh, another good card that out Scapegoat, uh, Tribe Infecting Virus, which unfortunately I don't have a way to search it, which is why, you know, it's one of those cards you kind of have to hard draw, but it's still pretty good, so, you know. Yeah, Tribe Infecting Virus is not too bad. Uh, one Tsukuyomi, unfortunately my only copy is Damage, but, I mean, it's a Book of Moon on legs, and it's a good way just to, like, constantly recycle Magician of Faith. So, yeah, and it's also good that he can book a moon some big monsters and just, like, run over them with something else that you can. So, Tsukuyomi's not too bad. It is a mandatory effect, so you just got to know that for a fact. I'm also running one Exile Force because, you know, it's searchable through Sangin. And, yeah, like, not much more to say about that. And Exile Force, you know, just pops anything. Well, any monster. Speaking of which, next card, one Sangin, and it is the pre -Arata, So, um, you get to search out any card with 1500 or less attack. And I also got the one Sinister Serpent, which also has the pre erratum So, like, and it's the effect where, like, it's in, while it's in your graveyard during you know, your standby phase, you can return this card back to your hand. So that's actually pretty busted. So, 
yeah, Sinister Serpent, great way to, you know, combo off with cards like Graceful Charity or just out delinquent duo. So, yeah, Sinister Serpent, pretty broken. All right, so that pretty much rounds out all our monsters. Moving on to the spells. Let me get this out of the way here. All right, for spells, as you all know, the namesake of this format is Goat Format. So three copies of Scapegoat. And these are the original uh, Joey's Structure Deck uh, copies. So I'm really happy I have these. Two copies of Nobleman Crossout, a really good card, but it is kind of a high risk reward because this can affect you too. But it's a good way to like get rid of your opponent's Magician of Fates for good, or just like any other flip monster that's going to be a problem. So something you something to consider. Two, two Book of Moon. Uh, I believe this was actually at three, but I played at two simply because, you know, I'm already running Tsukuyomi, so I figured, you know what, I'm already technically running three Book of Moons. So, yeah. Now, of course, all the one ofs, one pot of greed because it's limited. Graceful Charity, one Delinquent Duo, one Mystical Space Typhoon, one Heavy Storm. I actually did play Lightning Vortex in my build. And of course, one Snatch Steel and one Premature Burial because Monster Reborn is banned in this format. So yeah, these were definitely the best spells to play because like basically all this format was was just staple format. So like that's just, that's one of the other things that people had to nickname this. Uh, for my traps, running two copies of Dust Tornado because, you know, more backward removal. Uh, one Mirror Force because it's a great blowout card. One Torrential Tribute, which was also great for blowout. Uh, Raigeki and Darko were banned, so these were the best options. One Ring of Destruction, and this this is pre rata so you can activate it at any given time. And just a great way to close out in the game. And, of course, one copy of Call of the Haunted. Now, for those wondering, uh, do I have an extra deck? I kind of do, but it's not fully ready. And plus, I don't have Metamorphosis yet anyway. So, uh, but I do have a side deck. So, for until I get Metamorphosis, no uh, no extra deck. Which, honestly, I don't really need because my deck performs just fine. Oh, and uh, for my scapegoat tokens, I'm actually using these Trickstar tokens because they can be used as any token. So, I figured, why not? But yeah, I just wanted to throw that out there. Uh, for the side deck, I'm actually running one of each of the Monarchs that were really good during this time. One Zaborg. One Thestalos, and of course one Mobius. Uh, generally, I would play more Mobius, but I figured you know one of each wouldn't wouldn't be so bad. So, yeah. Next up, these are actually supposed to be Spirit Reapers, but until I get them, it's a pretty solid alternative, especially because they're good targets for a Shining Angel. Two copies of White Magical Hat, and of course I am running the one Injection Fairy Lily because it's searchable through sand again. So just a fair figure, just good going second cards basically. I'm also running two copies of Smashing Ground, because, you know, Smashing Ground was a really good card. Uh, it aims for a defense monster, so why not? Uh, one Swords of Revealing Light, because it was also limited. Uh, originally, I wanted to play Trap Dushu, but of course I don't have it, so I had to play a, another alternative, which actually is pretty good still. Three copies of Bottomless Trap Hole. Two copies of Sakuret's Armor, and the one Magic Cylinder, because this card was also limited, but also a great way just to close out a game, so... Yeah, it, the, the, these are all really good staple pieces. Well, that's all I pretty much got for you guys. Hope you guys enjoyed this, and I will catch you guys again next time.